The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 19th, the wonderful, no, the marvelous Monday edition. Now it's already jumping over to Wednesday, but it is the marvelous Monday edition. And I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. And uh, see, I get off my, my already in my mind uh, uh, scenario and it uh, totally throws me off track. Just shows you I can't chew gum and talk at the same time. I don't really chew a lot of gum. But anyways, uh, welcome to the August 19th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. Again, I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and uh, why don't we just really kind of get to it out here. We've got a, a mixed bag in the uh, marketplace. You've got the Dow trading up 202, S&P's up 24, NASDAQ's up 69, Russell's up 11. Semis are just slightly flat. They're down two points, so they're likely going to go positive here today. Trannies are up 109. New York Stock Exchange is up 102. You got the DAX trading up 120 points today. We're likely going to see a higher a, a higher close today, not the market sell off and give back these gains. Not that they can't, but the DAX and the NQ are said NASDAQ 100 are so correlated out there that there's certainly uh, uh, that's certainly suggesting to us that we should see this rally continue. We'll go take a look at those intraday charts to try to figure out where things are headed to. Uh, you've got gold trading up four bucks, silver's up 62 pennies, light recruit is uh, trading down about 46 cents. You've got all the sectors inside the S&P 500 that are trading to the upside. So that's another bullish uh, sign out there. So let's go ahead now. Look, I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648 if you've got a question. And some of you may have a question, but you can't call in. So for that, go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And then, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Dead, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Um, so where do we want to begin? How about let's start uh, taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. And here what we can see, and this is an interesting thing. So we've gone from the extreme. Uh, well, we didn't, it wasn't extreme, but it was just simply we went from the over a sold territory that was when we got down below the minus 150 level of the advanced client oscillator again what that is the advanced client oscillator it's a difference between two things those two things are two moving averages in this case here it's the 19 and the 39 period and it's the difference between those two things and its advanced decline line now in taking a look at the advanced decline line we are at a new all-time high today so the rally is real that's for sure out here but now what we can see with this advanced client oscillator is we have now approached the over bought territory if we get it closed above plus 150 it's a signal of higher prices to come that does not mean that it's tomorrow it just means higher prices to come what's an example of that well the last time that we were above that plus 150 level was back in the middle of july we had that move to the downside i said back then once we closed above the plus 150 that should lead to higher price out here well we're at a new all-time high inside the new york stock exchange as we speak right now at 1109 in the morning so what is this telling us this says to prepare anticipate that over the course of the next number of days out there we should see some kind of top at least a top that works off that overbought condition if we look at the spot volatility X, well it is still trading well below well below its 50-day expense moving average the 50 days at 1619 we're trading at 1474 when you trade above and below the 50-day expense moving average of the spot volatility X, it gives you a very good general sign out there as an example what's those general signs oh, that wasn't it thought I could go right to it. I think it's this one. These charts here, the green boxes and squares, rectangles, whatever shape they are, are periods of time when the spot volatile index is below its 50-day exponential moving average. The yellow is when the spot volatile index is above the 50-day exponential moving average. So it's a good rudder to understand what's going on with the general market. So what we've learned here is that uh, we are in overbought conditions that says that over the course of the next several days or what have you, we should see some kind of top form. 
well, if there's going to be a top that's formed, let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the equity future contracts. To do that, we're going to switch screens. We'll get back to my white background screens, and we'll get that over there pronto. Just got to make sure that I put the right screen up there. Otherwise, not so pronto. Okay, so we should see the ES Mini in the upper left-hand side. You'll see that today is bar number seven of a TD nine count pattern. What do we say about the advanced client oscillator? And it was suggesting that we'd see some type of short-term top. Well, now what we can determine is that likely short-term top would occur potentially between tomorrow and Thursday. Why potentially, Steve-O? Well, first is only bar number seven. Bar number eight still has to form, and it has to be a, a higher high. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be on bar number eight to get that higher high. It could come on bar number nine. It could come on the bar following bar number nine. And that's why I said potentially. Also, we've got to at least get to bar number eight in order for that pattern to unfold. So we know that the ES Mini, we took a look at what it was doing in that uh, 9 11 o'clock update out there. We saw the price was trading above its 0.786 retracement, 55.92. So odds favor a further move higher. Now, will it get back in the ES Mini to its all-time highs? I do not know the answer to that question out there. But that's something that we really want to be paying attention to, really across the board here with regard to the indices uh, here on the uh, on the NQ we are also in bar number seven now here it's only at the 0.618 retracement, or just slightly above that level. So it should continue to rally. It looks like this could form a TD9 count top between tomorrow and Thursday out there. Um, if we take a look at the Dow, also in bar number seven. So again, the same pattern. The only one that does not have that pattern is Russell 2000. Stubborn out there. But I'll take the signals from those three, those three being the ES, the NQ, and the Adal, to make a determination whether or not we're going to get some type of short-term top or not out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity uh, contracts. Why don't we dig down just a little deeper out here and see what's going on from a day trading standpoint. What we're looking for is any kind of top. So on a five-hour time frame chart, the ES Mini is up against some resistance area. That resistance area being its TD9 count breakdown level, that's at 5,600.75. If price can close above that, then we likely rally further. We can see that um, there was a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, uh, and that uh, suggested that, uh, well, that top will fail if we get a close above 55.9375, and if that close comes at 2 p.m. So there is already a top while we're up at resistance, but right now that top is subject to possibly being negated out there. That's what's going on on the five-hour time frame chart. What else do we see out here in the ES Mini? In the ES Mini on the two four-hour time frame chart, a negated TD9 count pattern has unfolded out here. And uh, we're trading above resistance at 55.95, 75. So that looks bullish. Looks like it's a five-hour chart. That's the one that is uh, the problem. 30-minute time frame. We've got a TD9 count top that's going to go ahead and form in another 16 minutes, a little bit less than 16 minutes. Now, that top can form, of course, on the bar following bar number nine. So it may not be till 12 noon that the pattern takes hold. How will we know? Well, the one of the ways we'll know is we can start taking a look at intraday charts as we get to a topping signal. For example, we can take a look at a 15-minute time frame chart. 15 minutes. We can take a look at a five-minute time frame chart. Do we start making lower highs and lower lows? And do we start breaking through some levels of support? Where's that level of support in the five minute time frame chart? It's at 55, about 55.97 out there. That's the bottom of its profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. Let's take a look at a couple of requests that have come in. And of course, I would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Hey, before we go take a look at uh, some requests that have come in, and I want to thank everybody for sending those requests, making those requests. Uh, there was something else that I ran across about an hour ago. I didn't even realize uh, that we were in this position. What's the position, Stevie? We're looking at the weekly uh, charts here for the equity future contracts, and I'm looking specifically at the NQ. And if this, this formed a new weekly profile, and it did it a couple of weeks ago. I can't believe that I didn't even see it. The importance of that and the importance of sharing that with you is this profile wraps around the prior profile. So you can see the current profile's got resistance up at 2983, support at 18077. If you look at the prior profile, you'll see it's within inside that. That sets up a message that we should anticipate a consolidation pattern. Now, that consolidation pattern may take us down to 18077, may take us up to the 2983 level out there, um, but just realize that we do have that. Now, the interesting thing here is I know I take a look at the weekly profile for the Russell 2000, this form with inside its prior profile, that too is a message of a consolidation. Now, we don't have that same message. We look at the ES Mini and the uh, Dow. Um, that's something that I'll be looking for. But the current message for the NQ and the Russell is that to expect and anticipate some type of consolidation. Why is that important? That's a great question. The reason why I believe that that is important is because if we just simply take a look at the 96-year um, uh, um, seasonal pattern for the S&P 500. We could put the Dow up. We've got 126 years, I believe, there. But this is the annual seasonal t pattern. Nothing is touched. We can see that September, you know, is a problem child. And we're moving higher into September. Uh, now, we talked about the TD9 count patterns that may form between tomorrow and Thursday. Um, that's not the end of the month. It's a week before the end of the month. We don't get on the seasonal charts out here. We don't uh, get so granular. Um, and even on profiles, we don't get so granular, even on the oscillator and change line, so granular that it has to hit that right to the tick out there. But we are moving into the unfavorable time period while price is pushing higher. It was also one of the reasons. And now, now, 
pushes higher and moves lower into wind. Well, typically it forms a bottom in September as well, the end of September. Oftentimes it doesn't really form that uh, Santa Claus rally until the middle to end of October out there. So maybe this is just telling us we're going to be in a consolidation, a choppy-ish type of market out there. At least that's the message at this moment in time. And uh, of course, we'll switch those messages when we, uh, when we need to, when we get additional information out there. Uh, how did I get lost here? That's weird. Okay. Um, so what else did I want to say? So in, in relationship to this, I'd made a comment. I want to take a quick peek. I could, oh, let's go. I, I know there's another chart that I can open up for the daily cash indices because I'm interested. We, we took a look at the New York Stock Exchange and that was at a new all time high. So I wanted to see on the cash indices where exactly we are at as we're getting these little TD9 count patterns. So these are the daily charts as well. They'll show us whether they have the same TD9 counts I see on the Dow Jones. It's bar number seven today. So the answer is yes there. We take a look at the S&P. That'll be up here in a moment or so. And the NASDAQ. Let's see if we've got the same counts up out there so on the uh so you can see new york stock exchange bottom right new all-time highs uh bar number seven on the s p cash same thing with regard to the ndx 100 and we are below those lows and so that's really what i'm looking at out here especially as we come into that september time frame out there look even though we've got that uh, did i switch over no i didn't let me switch over sorry about that change windows now you'll be able to see what I was looking at. Lower right, New York Stock Exchange bar number eight today, um, traded by at all-time highs. But we're not doing the same thing in the composite, the transports, the semis, the Russell, the NDX 100, the Dow. We're closest, to, or the S&P 500. We're closest to doing that inside the Dow and inside the S&P uh, 500 out there. So forming a top as we come into an unfavorable seasonal cycle um, that's below the prior tops out there, that most certainly is something to think about. But we'll have to see whether or not should price uh, move down inside the NQ, down to 18077 level, whether that holds or not. So I certainly wanted to be able to pass that on to you. And now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first one coming in from... A Nicholas. A Nicholas would like to take a look at Halliburton. So if you give me just a moment, I want to go ahead and close this uh, set of charts out there just to free up some space. I know that's not what you asked about. We can always come back and take a look at it. You're looking at ticker symbol HAL. And that today is uh, trading at about 3205 right now. It is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, this has very strong support. Uh, is there such thing as weak support, Stevie? Well, yeah, there is. Strong support is where you have both the center and the bottom at the same price level. That's at 30.78. And the top is at 32.17. You're looking to go long. So I wouldn't ask you to buy now as price is trading in the resistance. If you don't take out resistance, then price can't bust them to the upside. It'll try to bust them to the downside. So the entry area here at this stage of the game, I would say it would be around the 31.20 level between 30.78 the bottom of the profile, 3120 happens to be the current oscillator and change line. If we take a look at volume today, this is moving up today so far in about two hours of trading, about 1.7 million shares. What it's going into was something that came down with 11 million shares. So I don't expect it to break out, not that it can't break out, just don't expect it to break out. And I would really expect this to pull back further. We can see here, this is a three-day bar move to the upside. The first day was on uh, August 15th, then he had a higher close on uh, Friday. It looks like we may have a higher close today. So bar number three, that sets up the potential for a retracement or well, where that retracement begins today, tomorrow, uh, or the next day, shortly we should have that. On a weekly time frame, weekly time frame has a negated TD9 count bottom. It has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Don't know whether it's confirmed with volume or not. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Well, that didn't work. Let's try that one more time there, Stevie. Let's just get this the line figure out there. So there's our A to B point. We'll just simply move this uh, over on Halliburton over to the uh, to the C point. So what you're waiting on here is some type of bullish reversal candle. Your resistance on a weekly time frame, Nicholas, is up at the 3318 level. Both the bottom of its uh, profile as well as where the oscillator and change line should be trading, uh, should this rally. Now, if Halliburton were only going to, what Halliburton's going to rally, and it's only a counter trend move, where Halliburton will find resistance at the center of that weekly profile, and that's at 3375. Consolidation with inside the uh, monthly time frame chart. We know that resistance is held up at the 41.41 level out here. 
Right now you have a higher low, but the month is not over. So you got a consolidation on the monthly, an A to B equals CD to the downside on the weekly, waiting for a bullish reversal candle. And on the uh, daily time frame, you've got a wave number seven bottom. Uh, so to the extent you want to get into Halliburton, I would buy it on some type of retracement. Now, Nicholas, if you use some type of intraday chart out there, so for example, <clears throat> here's a 65 minute time frame chart. I don't have any kind of a top right now, nothing to suggest that Hal Burns should continue to move lower, at least for the next hour or two or however long. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, what do we have out here? Nice nice rally, a nice A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If there were to be a 30-minute bearish reversal candle, that would trigger a sell the D point top, and that would suggest a pullback towards the 3149 uh, level out there. So, you know, keep your eye on the uh, intraday charts as well. And I hope that provided you with the information uh, for going long Halliburton out there. Uh, Mr. Bill wrote in, and he would like to take a look at Pan American P A N W. Uh, that is not Pan American Silver. That's uh, P A N W. Why is Stevie having a brain fart? Um, P A N W. That is Palo Alto Networks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So uh, Mr. Bill wants to take a look at Palo Alto Networks out there, P-A-N-W, uh, more from an intermediate term time frame. So what I'm going to do here, Mr. Bill, is I'm going to start on the very right hand side. We'll look at the monthly time frame chart first. And on a monthly time frame chart, what we can see out here is we see a sell the D point uh, top that formed back in February of 2024. That monthly bar had 191 million shares. Uh, as we started trading into it a couple months ago, it was 60 million shares. Last month was 49 million shares. So far this month, we're at 40 million shares. So we're moving into that with um, lighter volume. That does not mean it's not going to rally. In fact, the weekly and monthly chart says it should rally. Why? Price is above resistance, the top of its profile, 326.94. And it's above a green oscillator and change line. So even though we're moving into that swing point with lighter volume, unless we see a clear top somewhere, Price is likely to go try to target that high. If we look at the weekly time frame, weekly time frame, we are trading above profile. We are trading above green oscillator and change line on a weekly basis. You're trading into what could be the B point of a uh, A to B, small A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That is the high from June 28th. The volume there was 17 million shares. Last week, as an example, as we were trying to test it, it was just 16 million shares. So pretty decent volume. So if Palo Alto Networks were to close above this week, 345.90, whether if it does with volume, you'd have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. If it doesn't do it with volume, you still have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, it just wouldn't be confirmed with volume. Now, I'm uh, taking the shallower swing point out here. Uh, the price objective would get us back towards the, uh, the all-time high out here, as we can take a look at out there. So that's something else just to consider now. So the weekly chart, the intermediate term chart, which is really what you're asking for, is bullish and suggests a further rally. Really, the monthly says the same thing. And the daily says the same thing as well. Profile support way down at 311, trade above a green oscillator and change line. Now, uh, the, the Thursday of last week, price was trying for that all-time high. Daily-wise, it did volume of 3 million shares versus... The swing point that had 4.1 million shares out there. Um, now, on a daily basis here, Mr. Bill, if we are to get a spike above the high from last Thursday, and that high is at 345.78, if you were to get that today, tomorrow, or the next day, well, let's say today. If you get it today, then that's going to potentially trigger a TD9 count top. The reason I have to say potentially is come tomorrow, we're in bar number eight today, and it looks like we'll close above the close of bar number five. But tomorrow, what price would have to do is certainly close above uh, uh, the close of bar number five, and that closes at 339.91. So I just note that on your chart or on your pad of paper out there uh, that you could potentially conceivably get a TD9 count topping pattern here uh, that would form, you know, tomorrow or on Wednesday out there. So just keep your eye on that. Uh, Mr. Bill, I hope that that helped you out. And as always, thanks for your question and keeping me in check out there. Ron would like to take a look at silver. His question, I believe, is a, on a daily basis. He said silver's up towards profile resistance. And what is its next steps out here, basically? So let's pull up the silver charts. We'll go to our eight panel set of charts out there. And you can see now what we don't know, what Ron and I don't know, is whether or not price will, in fact, indeed close above the top of its profile. So that number we're watching is 29.35 out there. If it does, it signals a profile change in trend and suggest a move higher that move higher price target wise uh, i would have to say would be 34.65 it's td nine count breakdown level now there is a small a to b equals cd pattern that uh, is forming out here on uh, silver and we're already at the one to one level or at least it looks like we are so here's your a to b point out here i can't tell which one Actually, that you know, this is what I hate, which I don't like doing for A to B equals CD patterns. I actually have to use the high of the candle and the low of the same candle for both the B and the C level. So we're above that one to one. What that says here, Ron, is to pay attention. If you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would generate a uh, likely generate a sell the D point pattern on the daily time frame. So short of that, we should see a rally. Um, the weekly rally target, we gave one rally target of 31.65. The second would be 29.87. 29.87 is the weekly oscillator and change line. Um, on a 30-minute time frame, 
uh, you're likely going to get a confirmed TD9 count top in 25 minutes. Bar number nine will form. Of course, if we were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would also generate a Roads momentum indicator top out there. Either of those tops, when they form, should they form, should take price back to support. Right now, the first level of support is 29.30. The second level of support is 29.06 out there. Otherwise, the other charts look pretty good. You're in bar number eight right now on the four-hour time frame chart. Nothing to worry about there. You're negating a TD9 count top on the five-hour chart. So we've got some um, uh, diverging messages here, but I would have to say the majority of the messages, other than the 30-minute right now, uh, that price wants to move higher. But is that 30-minute chart run that we really need to pay attention to? Why? Because we're talking about the daily being at profile resistance. And we just can't jump the, to the conclusion that price is going to take that out. If we start getting a retracement off that 30-minute chart, that puts that in jeopardy. We don't know whether uh, silver will be able to punch above that or not. So I hope that helped you understand uh, at least uh, my view of what silver is doing based upon its uh, different uh, daily and uh, weekly and, and intraday charts out there. So uh, thanks so much for the request. Let's go to the next. I'm going to go ahead and shut these charts down here because they take up a bunch of resources. But we're going to go take a look at ticker symbol NEE, -E, and that is for Joe D. Now, uh, Joe didn't indicate uh, anything specific, so we'll just do the typical review, daily, weekly, monthly review of NEE -E out here. And we can see that this is taking on profile resistance as well. And that's at 79.09. So that's the first level, Joe, that you want to be paying attention to. Price is also moving into a swing point. That's a swing point from the trading session of August the 2nd. Volume on that swing was 14 million shares in the first two hours of trading. We're at about 1.5. So you're certainly moving into that swing point with lighter volume. Doesn't mean it won't test the high. Doesn't mean it won't get to the high. It will likely do that if price can remain above 79.09. On a weekly time frame chart, Rose momentum indicator signal has been triggered, but no bearish reversal candle. Price is traded above a green oscillator and change line. It's traded above profile resistance as well. A further high is likely. Well, where's that further high? That's the further the further high is from that swing point again from August the second. If I didn't give you the number, that number is eighty dollars and fifty six cents. You're trading above profile on the monthly time frame above a green oscillator and change line. That too wants to head to higher ground out there. Now in a weekly, uh, well, it's just Monday, so no reason to look. So that's all that I see. Well, it's not all that I see. I see something else. Stevie, what else do you see inside of knee double E out there? You know, like a grape knee high. I uh, haven't had one of those in a while, although we do have a store down here that does sell those little suckers out there. Of course, as you can imagine, if you're going to sell that, that's a store that's probably filled with all kinds of sugar. What I see out here on NEE, that's Next Terra Energy, is it just negated a TD9 count. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just negated a 30-minute TD9 count. Uh, at 1130. So just about eight minutes ago. So uh, next tier of energy should rally further to the upside out there. So I hope that helps you out, Joe. When we come back this break, let's go take a look at WPM. We're going to take a look at the 30-year uh, treasury as well as the TLT for John C. And Peter would like to take the SPY. So we'll look at the SPY, the RSP. We'll see how all four S&P instruments are trading. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at wheat and precious metals out here. This is for Joe D. Uh, we can see, uh, Joe, that... Um uh, this is bullish on the daily time frame, should rally further. Uh, it's trading above a profile and also in change line resistance out here. Where is this thing headed to? I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart is bullish as well. We're trading above its green asset and change line and profile levels. We're trading inside. It's a swing point from back on July 19th. The volume there was 7.8 million shares. We uh, tagged that, closed inside it last week with 10 million shares. Okay, so now we know where, uh, uh, where wheat and precious metals should at least target, and that's that high out there. And that high, we'll just take a look at the weekly high, is up at the 60, 63.06 level. You're bullish on the uh, monthly time frame. No topping pattern here. You're above profile and also during change line resistance as well. So uh, you should see a further move higher. You're only bar number six. You could get a TD9 count top in wheat and precious metals by week's end out there. So, Joe, hope that helps you out. With regard to those two instruments, as always, thanks for taking the time to write in. We had a request to take a look at the 30-year uh, treasury. So let's go and the TLT. So what do we want to do first? Let's go take the 30-year. Um, and the TLT is a mix. It's basically, it supposedly averages 20 years in duration out there. We like to take a look at the 30-year to get a pretty decent feel for what the message is under the carpet. So um, first thing, John, is if we look at the monthly time frame chart, what you can see, and even though we've had a, a nice rally here, we can see that what price is really contending with is the sell zone. And that sell zone runs for anywhere from about 125.27 to about 131.01 out there. So just keep that in mind. That's important to understand. Because if we look at the weekly chart, we'd say, man, things look very bullish, which they do. Prices trade above the oscillator and change line resistance level as well as the top of its profile. The top of that profile uh, that uh, fell a couple of weeks back. Uh, 122 is the uh, number to be watching there. We do have a sell the D point top inside of the daily time frame. Uh, that formed out here with this bearish Three River Evening Star. It completed that pattern on August the 6th. But what price has done, it keeps pulling back and testing and holding, for the most part, that oscillator and change line out there. So what does that tell us? We're above that green oscillator and change line, above its daily profile. A further rally most certainly could unfold. If you look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, 30-minute uh, time frame chart as a TD9 count top that would fail. It would fail with a close above 124.05 or 
Right now, actually, we might have failed last bar. Let me see here. No, 124.05. So we close above that on a 30-minute basis. That pattern gets negated. I don't see any other topping signals. That was the only short-term topping signal I saw. So, um, But you're trading into – it's going to be very choppy if it wants to continue to rally just based upon that monthly time frame chart. Now, let's go switch over from these charts, which I'm going to close down as well. just takes an extra minute. It's going to take us back to the chart that shows the GDX, which we'll eventually get to. But right now what we're going to go do is take a look at the TLT and see what its messages are, at least be able to provide that information to John. Is this the TLT? That is not. Is this the TLT? There you go, Stevie. So here you can see on a daily time frame for the TLT, John, price to trade above profile and also to change line uh, resistance wants to rally further. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart says the TLT formed a new profile last week and your resistance level is up at 99.93. And on a monthly time frame, your only resistance is the swing point from back in December of 2023. And that high in the TLT is at... 90 100.57 100.57 so those are some numbers on the tlt again the 30-year treasury tlt bullish for the uh, daily bullish for the uh, weekly you got a consolidation there so just watch that 98 93 level out there john hope that helps you out peter wanted to take a look at the spy so to do that, we're going to go ahead and put up this set of charts out here. And this is a set of charts that also allows us to take a look at the equated ETF. So we can see that this, uh, that the rally that we're having is widespread. Now, of course, we knew that when we took a look at the New York Stock Exchange and we saw that the uh, uh, the advanced decline line was at a new all-time high. So that was helpful to tell us that. Um, so here we take a look at, you can see that we are in bar number seven, whether it's the RSP, the SPY, whether it's the ES or the uh, cash index out there. So with regard to the SPY, it looks like it wants to go target its all-time high. I don't know whether it gets up there or not. Um, but what we're watching for here, uh, Peter, obviously is uh, a TD9 count pattern to unfold. Uh, there's no A to B equals CD pattern. If there is a high as we come into the end of August, into the early part of uh, September, um, you know, that's the only pattern that exists right now that I see. I don't know what additional, you know, we're pretty much clear. Of everything i mean this did gap down that's the spy it did gap down with about 57 million shares back on the trading day of that was on uh july the 17th La yet last friday you're up with 44 million shares today so far we're with that 10 million shares so it's about a 35 million share a day so you know it's not substantial volume on that gap to the downside but that could be another price target as you know that price target then being the high uh, the high of that uh, gap, if you will, or the low of the gap, however you want to take a look at it, the high of the trading says for July 17th, 560.51. So that's what I see when we take a look at the spies, Peter. Hope that that helps you out. Dan wants to take a look at IBRX. So let's see if that is the – where did Stevie put that? There we go. So we take an IBRX out here, and I know that, uh, Dan, you're looking for a nice bottom out there. The very first thing, and I think we might have looked at this before, we might have looked at it when it was forming that TD9 count bottom, correct me if I'm wrong out there, and I should have said, if I didn't say I'd be surprised, that the real key here for IBRX isn't whether or not, for example, it generates a, a bullish reversal candle today that would confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. What's really important for this is to close above that oscillator and change line. That's not to say you wouldn't have additional battles up top, such as at the 429, 462, 496 level, because you would. But right now, you've got a road momentum indicator signal triggered. You'd like to see a bullish reversal candle form, and you'd like to see that oscillator and change line resistance level fail. Now, this is traded higher for three consecutive days. The first close higher was on August 14th, followed by the 15th, and then followed by Friday. So you get a three-bar move to the upside. You don't have many moves to the upside. Here's a two-bar move out here. So now you got to a three-bar move, somewhat promising, but that oscillator and change line stopped that rally in its tracks. Now what I would expect is I would respect, I would ex expect or anticipate a at least a two-bar uh, decline out there. We're trading into a swing point from back on August 14th. The swing point there, 5.2 million shares so far today. Oh, 2.5 million shares. So you're trading inside a swing point with volume, very likely going to go test that swing low, at least that low being 352. 
The weekly chart has an A to B equals CD pad on the downside. The initial price projection about the 260 uh, type area out there, this does have breakout support at 337. So if you could get a bullish reversal candle on the daily, and if you could close it above its oscillator and change line, well, then the weekly may have bottomed, not with a uh, uh, an A to B equals CD pattern, but by getting back towards its breakout level. Now, on the monthly time frame, the monthly chart as uh, trading back to profile support. Now, profile support is at 346. So if price were to close below 346, Dan, you'd be below a red oscillator and change line. You'd be below profile support. And that would suggest getting back to the buck 25 level. So do I see a bottom right here right now? At the moment on my screen, it shows as a hammer candle. Don't know whether that will be there at day's end. But even if we get a bullish reversal candle, we need to see that close above that oscillator unchanged line. Steve Rhodes, we TFNM, we come back to close out the show. We're going to take a look at the GDX from a weekly standpoint, or really all the standpoints that we can, for Hector and Patty. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at the charts here for the GDX daily, weekly, and monthly. If you look at the monthly, it's a bullish configuration above resistance levels, the oscillator and change line. Profile, the same thing is true for the weekly time frame chart. It suggests that that price should go target the July 19th high out there. 
That's a swing point that's got volume of 108 million shares out there uh, last week, or we closed into it last week with 88 million, so lighter volume. Nonetheless, that high should be tested. Maybe it gets taken out. And that's really what Hector is wondering about. If that price gets taken out, that being uh, 39.41 and do with more than 108 million shares, does that set up one heck of an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside? We're going to come back and answer that question shortly. Daily time frame bar number seven today, trade into profile resists at 39.05. The swing point itself is from uh, July 17th. 23 million shares there so far in uh, just a uh, little about two, almost two and a half hours of trading, about 8 million shares. So similar type volume uh, as you move into that uh, level out there. Now, let's go switch over to the black background charts. And the issue that I see here, um, Hector, with regard to the – oh, jeez, that's not it. Sorry. I'll try to do that again. Wasting time, Stevie. Let's not waste any time out here. The issue, Hector and Patty – with the weekly time frame chart is where do you want to start your A to B equals CD pattern? Because really, when we take a look at it, the real A to B equals CD pattern is the one. Well, they're all real. But the one I'm looking at would start on September 26th as the A point. The B point would be out here on May, the uh, May day, May 1st. And it looks like the C point, C point is, let's see, 27, 26. And that is 27. 30, 45. So it looks like here's your C point. If I don't get it exact, that on ball is accurate. I'm not going to worry. So you've got an A to B equal CD that completes at about 40, 36. We're in bar number seven on a TD nine count pattern uh, today. Uh, we got to be careful because we talked about, uh, uh, well, man, I don't think we talked about gold or if we did, but uh, just got to be careful out here with regard to what the daily signals are telling us here. I know that what you wanted to do was you wanted to look at this A to B equals CD, but you've always got to pull that chart back further because there are multiple A to B equals CD patterns out here. And this is the one really that Hector, I think, was taking a look at. He's hoping that that high gets taken out from July that we took a look at, and that would form a new A to B equals CD with 47.60 out there. There's multiple A to B equals CD patterns. So uh, I'll keep you in on the game. I'll keep you posted. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Stay tuned for all the great programming, and I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Have a marvelous Monday, and be safe out there.